Okay, we're going to go forward with this, and hopefully it's recording. Um, all right, yesterday we left off right before we got into the scanner. And let's see, we talked about the, uh, there we go. starting to lose my mind here with this computer. All right, so yesterday we left off talking about the uh, data types. Um, and we we're using the char data type. And so we looked at the escape sequence, the tab sequence, the new line, the carriage return, how to escape a uh, quote, a single quote, and how to add backslashes. All right. What we're going to look at now is the system in object. We've used the system out dot print line to display things on the screen, but there's also um, the input that you can accept into the um, into your program. And before the scanner class came out, the way you would do this was actually through system.in and then you would have to read in and do a while loop and capture things as you went. And it was kind of cluggy, uh, clunky to do it that way, but that's the way you would uh, deal with input streams. You would have to loop through them and listen for certain characters and break on them and so forth. The scanner class makes that a lot easier. Um, you can use it for your keyboard and basically from a, uh, you can run a basic text program using the scanner class. All right, so it breaks things down into what we call as tokens. And uh, tokens are, uh, if you've ever done any type of uh, comma delimited files, has anyone ever used a comma delimited file before? So like if you use a comma delimited file, you can open it up in Excel and Excel treats it as like a, like a data set. Um, similarly, Scanner works through the idea of tokens. So it will read, um, until you reach a new line character or it'll read uh, based on uh, a space or or whatever and we'll kind of look at some of uh, different methodologies for for retrieving data uh, you have the next double which as you can imagine if you have scanner dot next double you're going to receive what kind of data type it's going to expect a data type that's a double, right? If you say next int, you're expecting a an int. If you say next line, next line is a little bit more special. Next line goes all the way to the end and it picks up the carriage return or the new line character. If you say next, next will pick up the, uh, the next character in the sequence. So if you have a set of characters like this is my class, T is a character, H is a character, I is a character, S is a character, the space, and so next will iterate through each of those characters. Next short, it expects that the character it pulls up will be a, a short, right? Next byte, it expects that it will be a byte, and next long. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of a gotcha here because when you're writing your sample program, if you've already done the program for this week, you've probably or might have ran into an issue where you use scanner and you say next int, but then it doesn't give you what you're expecting because remember, it only captures one character at a time within or, or one set of numbers at a time. Um, let me explain. So here we have this input. We, we initialize our scanner. And I used this word last week, instantiate. Okay. Instantiate, if you break it down, it means an instance. So you're you're making something, you're, you're taking an instance and you're creating it. You're making it available. You're making an object. So anytime you hear the word instantiate, you're taking a class and you're making an object out of it. 
So here we have scanner input device. We're giving the name of the variable that's going to represent the scanner class. And we're saying now instantiate that object with the name input device. Now we do that by saying new scanner. And every class has a constructor. And what we're seeing here when we talk about a constructor, when you instantiate a new object, the constructor will always be the, the called part of the parentheses. And so this constructor requires a, uh, an input stream. And this input stream is system.in. So now we have the input device is the name. And so we say system out print line. Please enter your next name. Okay, so it says print line. So if you're imagining your uh, text um, text program that you wrote, it's going to be in this black or white text is going to appear and say, please enter your next name. And then it's going to be just, just a cursor, just blinking. And so you'll type in something. Now, next line that you see here will always accept a string or it implicitly expects whatever it comes in. It, it expects it as a string. But next line will go, always go to the very end of the character stream all the way to the new line character. Remember before I told you that the new line character, it's one of those hidden characters that tells most text processors that you're on the next line? Or if you see a carriage return, it goes to the next line. Those those hidden characters are typically not visible, but they make the information on your screen more understandable. So next line takes the entire string and the carriage return or the new line character, right? And what it's saying is it's going to left assignment of the value that it receives from that input and assign it to the, va the value name. Now, where is name declared at? Name is declared right there. String name, right? We've just declared it. And then we're assigning the value down here. Then we have the next system out print line. Please enter your age. And we have input device, which is the name of the variable, dot next int. Next int is expecting a, an int. Uh, what what do you think would happen if you put in something that was not an int and hit enter? It's going to throw an error. In fact, it will complain. It will say the object that you passed in, it doesn't match the type, and the system will just exit and exit out. Now, handling errors like that, that's going to be something you learn later in this class. But that's important, too, because Java actually handles mistyped information. If you're doing this in C++, you would have to build into the program yourself the ability to catch that error. Because if you didn't, again, a hacker could take advantage of your program to take over the system. Yeah, It's like crazy. Uh, Java really protects you from a lot of that, makes it easier. It handles a lot of those low-lying uh, problems. All right, so you have the system out print line, and I'm taking the variable now, name, which I've assigned up here, and I'm concatenating it with the rest of this string, the string literal, and you are, plus, and I'm taking the int of age, and I'm saying years old. Okay, now here's the problem. I talked about this a second ago. The scanner class, when it retrieves methods, when you're using a retrieval method or the next method, before using the next line method, you can run into an issue where you say, give me the next character, but it doesn't match the input that you're expecting because you have only used a next or a next int. And so sometimes what you have to do is if you're using, uh, for example, an int, 
and after that you're going to require more input you need to go ahead and use a next line after that so that you get the new the the carriage return or the new line character cleared from the buffer all right would you like to see this in in action what i'm talking about okay. i'm going to use intellij here just so you you all can see this um, and I'm going to use the um, Ultimate Edition. I've installed the um, JDK on this box, but I haven't configured my project yet to use version 13. So it's still using version 11. So if you're in IntelliJ and you're going to create a new project, you go to Create New Project. And you have all of these different types of projects over here you could select. Um, these are not really as important to you right now. You probably recognize Android. Uh, things like Java FX, which we'll get into at the end of this class, like in the last week briefly. Um, Spring is a API. It's an uh, application programming interface. It's a set of libraries that are made available to you. Um, for some advanced concepts like inversion of control and um, but you guys are not ready for that so uh, later on if you want to learn more I recommend learning how to use spring in your Java projects for our purposes you just want to select the top one okay if you're gonna do by the way if you want to do Java web you would select Java enterprise that would be that would be doing Java web programming all right so you select Java you select your your SDK, you go to next, and I'm going to um, have a command line app. So we'll click next, and we're going to call this uh, my J option pane example. All right, click finish. And it's going to give you all these little tips to help your life be easier, but we really don't care about that right now. All right, click over here on the project. It basically initializes it. Here's the name of the project I created. And inside the source, I come over here and type new class. And I'm just going to call it the same as my project, J option pane example. Okay. Um, at this point, we need to put in our public static void main method, string args, hit enter. All right. One of the nice things about IntelliJ, it's just like when you were using, uh, what was the... Atom, I think is what we used last class. Just like Atom, it does uh, code completion for you. So JavaX, let's say import JavaX swing J option pane. It's pretty nice, right? Okay, so we have our, let's declare some variables here. Let's declare a string name, an int age and then we're going to say j option pane uh, show input dialog now this is one of the nice features about IntelliJ I told you before yesterday or the last class you noticed that in this particular part of the parameter method it had null this is actually expecting a parent input so you can actually attach this j option pane to a larger object larger swing object so they call it okay so we got this we're going to say null because we're not attaching it it's doesn't matter and we're going to say please hey Stop it. 
enter your name. Okay. I'm going to do that. And then you can if you want to. It doesn't matter. Um, over here, the, the other nice thing is we know that a show input dialog, it returns it returns a string. IntelliJ will prompt you and say, do you want to introduce a variable here? Sure, why not? And I'm going to call my variable something meaningful. right? If I'm returning a string that's going to be a name, it's just good practice. Call the variable that it returns something meaningful, like name, right? Okay, to make it, um, there's also this nice feature there. I don't know if you saw that. An IntelliJ. Did you see that? Let me do it again for you. I like that when it does that. It just sout and then tab. System outline print. All right. Um, I'm going to take out the print line though, and I'm going to do this. Okay. All right. Now, why is this complaining? Variable name is already defined. Yes. All right. So, so far we have this. Uh, but let's, let's uh, do this backwards. Let's do age equals J option pane show in option what is it input where to go input dialog null please enter your age you notice that this gives an error message until uh, you resolve it right so what is our input required is an int. So let's take this out for a second. Can you not see it? Let's see. Yeah. There is a way to do this. What's that? Nope. Um, no, there's another way to do it. I have to font, let's see, 16. Yeah, that's how you do it. How about 18? Is that better? There we go. All right. Can you see that now? Okay. So I've got this. Uh, let's see. This is going to introduce a variable. It's going to give me a string, right? So to, let's see, show input dialog. What did our example over here have? Uh, that's scanner. Were we on the scanner a minute ago talking through that problem? All right, I jumped ahead. <laughs> All right, tell you what, let's let's do this again. Let's have a new project. I'm getting ahead of myself, guys. I apologize. All right, so we're going to create from template command line app. Next, uh, this is my scanner example. A new window. All right. So we're going to import Java Lang. Is it Java? What is it? 
util, I think it is. Scanner, there it is. And all right, so we initialize our scanner and we're gonna call it the input equals new scanner, which is system.in. And then we're gonna say, please use quotes, please enter your age. All right, this is what I was trying to show you. I apologize, guys, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Input, and we're gonna say next int. And this will give us the option of assigning it. So we'll have int age age equals that string name now this is the error I was trying to show you all that um, please enter your name input Next, what is it? Next line and string name. Whoops, not string because I've already declared it. Here we go. Your name is name plus. And you are years old. Dang. All right. Say not print F, print line. You are. Please, please enter. Okay. All right. So you can compile these very quickly in IntelliJ just by clicking run. And it will pop up a terminal screen here in a moment. There you go. Please enter your age. All right. So my age is. 16, but did you see what just happened? Exactly, it skipped ahead. Because this is the, um, the problem with the scanner class. Uh, it will skip ahead if you don't use the right um, the right way, the right way, the right way to handle it. So, one of the ways you can do this is you can say next line, and then you can convert this uh, integer into. Let's see. Where is it? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here. Let's see. I think it's uh integer. String, let's see. Uh-huh. No. Now you declaring your variables doesn't matter at this level. They do need to be inside the method, though, the main method, because if you put them outside, 
then you have to declare the main class in order to access them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's let's take a look here. There are some things called wrapper classes. And the wrapper classes give you the ability to take a string object and convert them to an integer or convert them to whatever. So let's say four, null pointer exception. All right. I am not remembering here best way to do this. Tell you what, we're going to get to part of this in a second. Um, so you can handle it like this, just treat your ages like so, and then you can come down here and, um, what is it? I think it's uh, age uh, there is, I can't remember the value of, is it integer value of, yeah, there it is. So you can convert the value here of age. Does that make sense? So you take it in as a string and then you can convert it to, um, to, to whatever. So int new age equals, right? New age. All right. Okay, enter your name, Mike. There you go. All right, so this is called a wrapper class and you can do the same thing with uh, double value of, and you can see you can convert the value. Now, it's important that you think about handling the inputs that your, uh, your users may be passing to you because you can never trust what they type. You guys should know that yourself, right? Sometimes you're sitting down and you're not looking. You're just hammering away on the screen like like a puppy dog, just tapping all over it. You don't know what's coming in, so you have to handle the input. You have to validate it. All right. Any questions about this little example? If you go to use IntelliJ to do your project, when you go to compile, comment that out up there. And um, I don't recommend you name your class main method, but um, when you create it, you're going to um, I'll show you here. So we have, what was it, scanner example? What was the name of that project? Do you guys remember? My scanner. All right. So let me let me give you an example here. If you use IntelliJ to do your homework, which is perfectly fine, because you haven't learned how to deal with packages yet, just make sure you comment out the package. Come down here and navigate into the source, the name of your package name. So in my instance, it's source com MDR solutions. You have the class there. So you're going to say Javac, main Java, and then Java main, right? So it's the same thing. Make sense? All right. I know some of you are going to get this confused and want to submit the whole package to me. 
Don't we're not at that level yet to submit whole packages. Just just the Java class, and it needs to be the .java file. Um, okay, and you can in IntelliJ it's going to show this error message because you have a missing package, but that's okay because you've I've told you to comment it out, right? Okay, let's go back to our lecture for a moment. Let's see here. Dialog boxes, accept input through a dialog box and confirm input. Um, the one that I jumped ahead of and was showing you was the um, the J option pane. And with the J option pane, you have several different inputs you can use. You can use the show input dialog, show confirm, show message. There's a bunch of different options that you can use for the uh, for the J option pane. All right, this is the code for it. So you need to import the package, which is javax.swing.joptionpane. That's where that code resides. And all of these packages right now are available within the standard Java library. You'll notice that even string is actually part of a package somewhere, but it's made available to you by default. Uh, System.out.println, that's part of a package somewhere. All of those are made available to you by default. In this instance, you have to include, you have to import the package in order for your code to know what you're talking about. So you declare the variable, string result, you have result equals j option pane show input dialog, null object because the parent, we're not using it, and then the message. And you're outputting it over here to, to result. And then you have joptionpane.show message dialog, same, same pattern again. All right, you may have noticed here that the class joptionpane, it implicitly, if you're looking at this, you should realize it, that it has a static class method. And it shows it to you right now. Even though you don't, even though you you don't see static in front of it, you're using the class dot the method. And the only way you can do that is if that method is static. Otherwise, you would have to instantiate the J option pane object. Does that make sense? No. Yes. All right. Remember what instantiate means, right? You have a class. And you're going to instantiate an object of that type class to be used. Instantiate means to make the class into an object that you can use. Once you have the object instantiated, you can use the public methods of that instantiated object. However, if the class has a static method, you can call that static method directly without instantiating it. Okay? All right, so let's do an example of uh, of this one. All right. Here, let's see, they're just, what is your name, right? So we have the sample code that I already wrote for you, J option pane example. I declare the string. We don't need the name right now. And J option pane show input dialog. And so now we need to take the value of string and do something with it. If we wanted to, we can output it to system out print line. We can say that um, we could say that the name say again. I am, is it not showing? Okay, hang on. Okay. So I have string name equals j option pane dot show input dialog. Some of you may notice that I put the in, the creation of my name variable right up against the j option pane. That's perfectly fine to do it that way. Okay. So j option pane dot show input dialog. This is a static method, and if you don't believe me, watch the magic here. With IntelliJ, you can click into it and see the source code. And guess what? It's a static method, and it returns a string. 
And the first variable is a component called parent component and accepts an object, right? Okay. So we have the name. We can output the name in uh, a system out print line. We can also feed it back to the user. J option pane show a message dialog. All right. Now, I forgot to put the null in. There you go. IntelliJ does this thing where it um, it prepins in front of the parameter the expected type, so you can actually see what uh, what those are. All right. So then. If we look at show message dialog, it returns what? It returns void. Okay. We can again drill into the code and we can see that it returns nothing. All right. So let's run the code. Where am I at? I am in idea projects. And this is the J option pane example. I'm going to go into the source. Right, because here's my J option pane. I'm going to compile it. And then we're going to run it. And you can see the little uh, Duke icon appeared. Please enter your name. Uh, my name is Duda. Okay. Apparently your name is Duda, but I don't believe you. All right. Okay. So that's one example you could use there for the J option pane. Uh, you could make it a little bit more interactive. You could say J option pane show message confirm dialog. Okay, again we'll plan null and are you sure that your name is name. And this one, the J option pane confirm dialog, oops, it returns an int. And if we're curious about what that means, we have the Java doc here. So the integer indicating the option selected by the user. Okay. And so what are the possible Values, yes, no, and cancel option. Well, so if it returns a yes, no, or cancel option, it has to be an int, which means it has to be a number. We can scroll to the top up here and look for a constant that someone created in the code, because that's usually where you want to put it. And looky there, there's our constants that tell you what those are, what those values are. Okay, do you all see that? So if it returns a zero, then I know it's a yes, no option. Of a yes or no option. <laughs> it doesn't really tell us, does it? A yes, no cancel option and an OK cancel option. All right. So. Let's go back. All right, so we have this. Let's go ahead and compile our code again. It's kind of hard to see there, isn't it? Let me uh, let me open up a different session. There we 
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to compile this again. Remember, I'm compiling my Java object. And then now I'm going to run my just the class name because it expects the class to exist. So we run it again. Enter your name. Yo Simity Sam. Are you sure your name is Yosemite Sam? Yes. All right, and then it, ex it exits on. Okay, any questions so far with the code samples? All right, it's important that you kind of play around with these and, and uh, use the code um, learning what the different ones are, otherwise, you can't really understand it just watching me do this. You really got to dig into it, play around with it, read the exception messages, get comfortable with understanding the errors and, and how to move forward. All right, let's go on back to the, uh, the slides here. Okay. All right. So that's the, uh, the option dialog. So you have the show input. You can convert a string to an int or a double. And I showed a little bit of this earlier with the integer, uh, with the wrapper classes. These are called integer and double. If you remember yesterday, I told you that there were eight primitive types. Do you remember what the eight primitives were? Could someone shout them out? Byte, short, long, integer, boolean, float, double, That's pretty good. Char. Yeah. Okay, so those are the, the eight types. Now, because Java is an object-oriented language, primitives are not necessarily objects. Um, but there are objects available, and these are called wrapper classes. And one of these is the integer class and the double class. With the integer class, there are a lot of uh, functions available for the integer and the double. Um, for example, you could say integer parse int or double parse double. And the idea behind parse is you're giving a string and you're going to read that string and parse it to the value that, it, that we are expecting it to be. Um, let me go back over here again. Let me exit first, and then I'll go code here because we don't really need it. Well, actually, yeah, let's just leave it. What is your your age? All right. We know that the um, the J option put J option show input dialog. It returns a string, right? And a string is a collection of chars. It's actually under the covers it is a char array. The string is. So when you're converting characters you have you're thinking about how do I read the character and say yes you are a number or no you're not a number right. So let's let's just do a quick sample here. So I have an age, and I want to convert the age to an integer. So I'm going to say uh, parse int age. And it'll immediately give me the option of, uh, of that value. Now, there's some other things you, you can do here. You can declare as final. And uh, we'll get into that later in this class. But for right now, what we've what we've done fairly easily is we've taken the integer and now we've or taken the age of string and converted it into an int. We could also do this. We could say double parse double. What do you think? Do you think the string of sixteen would parse as a double? What do you think? 
Yes? No? Don't be afraid. What do you think? All right. If I have a number of, say the number is 5, Five in itself is a whole number, but it's also a decimal number, right? So it could be 5.0 is acceptable. Make sense? So if I pass in an age, and as long as that age is a whole number, it will also parse as a, um, as a double, or even as a float for that matter, okay? Uh, so let's let me just put these out there. So we have I plus, and you notice here that I'm doing something, appending quotes in front of them. What would happen if I didn't have the quotes in here and I said plus? It would actually add the numbers together. Yeah. So by putting quotes inside of it, I keep it separate. So I'm not getting a doubling the number. All right. So let's um we'll just run this method real quick. All right. So enter the age and I'm going to say 12. And you can see down here system out print line, which we know this is the uh this is still a string age is 12. Here, this i is this one here. Do you see that? So this is a number, and here it was converted to a double. All right. Well, what happens, though, if we try to pass in something that's not a numeric and we parse it? What do you think would happen? beautiful isn't it yeah it makes me smile but this is actually a very useful error notice what it says java lang number format exception for input string high you can't convert high into a number right yeah so it 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 throws the error and it makes it very easy to understand where the error is at okay let's go back to our slideshow, uh, P Diddy or any of that. All right, these are these wrap up primitive objects and they make them into regular object oriented things. All right, so we have the show dialog box, we have the show confirm dialog box, we have the integers that are returned for the yes option, the no option, and the cancel option. Uh, I must have missed those in the source code for that. But there they are. You can create dialogues with five arguments. The parent component, a prompt message, the title, an integer that indicates which option button to show, and what kind of dialogue to show. All right, so here's an example. You have the confirm dialog box displayed by the error airline dialog application. Uh, you can perform calculations with values in programs. We did this a little bit last week. If you remember, I had you do some simple calculations on, um, on salary and, and so forth. Um, the standard operators that you would use for this, plus, minus, the asterisk for multiplication, the um, slash for division, and the percent sign for remainder, or what we'd say is modulus. Okay. Uh, the example they show up here is 45 modulus 2, the result is 1, meaning that's the remainder that you would receive off of doing that type of division. So if you want to get the remainder, that's how you get that. All right, do y'all need to see examples of using these operators? 
Yes. Okay. We will do a cool. We have our J option pane. Let's um, we got the age. We don't really need all that though. We'll just take that out for right now. Let's say our int is salary of seven point twenty five. That's the rate, right? All right, so double rate, 7.25. Um, and then the hours worked would be what? 40. 40, okay. All right, so system out print line. We're just going to spit it out on the screen so we can see it. Um, we have the rate times... times the hours worked. All right, very simple program. We run it, and there we go, 290, right? Yeah, you see it at the bottom? Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll do this. Uh, you made this week. You made this amount this week. There you go. Bad grammar. All right. Okay, so what if we want to do something a little different? Let's say, well, um, let's say that your value, let's say, uh, Double amount equals <coughs> that. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. We run that again. Nothing surprising there. Let's say that we want to find something different, though, that um, the amount modulus uh, 8. And we're going to give this a double uh, remainder. We just want to see what the remainder would be. So this would give us the remainder using the modulus symbol divided by 8. And so you have a remainder of 2. Right? Uh, what are some other options we had there? We had the divisor, the multiplier, minus. Uh, all of the same principles that apply to math. What is it? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right? All of that applies. The order of precedence. Um, there is also available something called the math library. And in the math library, you can get things like the cosine and lots of lots of different things. The logarithms, the max, the mins. Um, you can even generate random numbers using math, the math library. Um, all of that is available as well. Okay. Any questions so far? Yep. Just put it right into one variable. It's always best to, um, to assign things into variables and pass the variable around instead of 
uh, a calculation or uh, or a con uh, you know a number because you might find later on oh I need to take that amount and divide it by something or so you just want to look ahead and think about uh, when you're writing your programs what types of things you might be doing with your your variables with the data okay let's go back over here we have about uh, 20 minutes left in class is everyone good at e like IntelliJ so um, you can install IntelliJ pretty simply just by following the prompts you just install it and it it works you can you can use notepad uh, when you're first learning Java it's sometimes good to not use an IDE because it forces you to memorize all of the different uh, syntax but if you're trying to learn some particulars about how the language works having IntelliJ or Eclipse is nice because you can drill into it and say oh that's how they did it and as you know sometimes the best way to learn is by example so yeah all right Adam is um, Adam doesn't have a compiler on it and IntelliJ and Eclipse they both integrate with the JDK so you can use them to and believe it or not IntelliJ and Eclipse were both written in Java all of that pretty functionality that you see that's all Java programming that makes that appear so all right so operator precedence you guys got all that um, some different calculations. Uh, all right, some pitfalls. And not understanding the imprecision of floating point numbers. So integer values are exact, meaning they don't have a decimal point off of them. The only decimal they have is implicit in the fact that it's a dot zero, right? Because it's a whole number. Uh, imprecision leads to a lot of different problems. So floating point can output may not look ex exactly like you want. Uh, comparisons with floating point numbers may not be exactly what you expect either. So you need to think about the precision of your floating point number. Are you wanting one, two, three, four, or so forth? And um, okay, so we have type conversions, um, variables of constants of the same type. Um, different types of type conversion would be like converting from a double to a float or a long or an int. Um, you cannot convert longs to ints. Okay? It, it won't let you do that. However, you can convert an int to a long you can convert an int to a double, but you can't convert the other direction. Whichever is the larger number, you can't convert it down to the smaller. It, um, yeah, can't downgrade. All right, explicit typecasting. So say you want to convert something. You can do that by explicitly casting it. Now, let me give you an example. Say you're over here and you have um, a double of a mount, right? And you want to convert this to a float of, let's just call it a FL amount, because I can't think of anything. Uh, ingenious at this point. Right now I can't do it, right? However, if I come over here, I do that, now I'm explicitly casting it. I'm telling it, take this value and cast it. In fact, you can do that for a lot of things. You can explicitly cast it. Doesn't mean it'll work. Like if you try to explicitly cast something uh, where the type won't, won't cast, then you're gonna have problems. However, you could do something like this. Oh, you still can't see it? I'm sorry. Okay, let me go back. 
All right, y'all see the example? So here I have a mount, which is a double, and I'm explicitly casting it to a float. Does that make sense? You can, you can cast anything you want. You can cast it to any type you want. You cannot cast to things that, that don't make sense, though. Um, you, like, for example, if I wanted to cast to a string amount, I could do that. That would work. Should work. Maybe not. There you go. That's how you cast it here. You use the value of. What is it complaining about? Oh, there you go. It wasn't complaining. All right, so you have you have explicit ways of casting things. Uh, any questions there about casting? All right. Let's see here. Things don't do, don't mispronounce integer. Don't as attempt to assign a literal constant floating point number. Don't forget the precedence rules. Don't forget, these are good rules to, to keep in mind. Say again. Um, I believe what they're trying to tell you is integer lowercase versus integer uppercase. So an integer as in a um, primitive is an int. An integer as in a wrapper class is an uppercase i integer spelled out. Um, don't use a single equal sign in a Boolean comparison for for equality. If you do that, what you'll do is assign the variable. It'll left assign it. And don't try to store a string character in a char variable. Uh, don't forget that when you're, let's say, that when a string and a numeric value are concatenated, the resulting expression is a string. I showed you that a minute ago. You can concatenate two numbers as long as it's got a string in between it. Uh, don't forget to consume the inner key in the scanner class when a next line method call follows. You guys can read. These are all pretty, pretty straightforward. All right. Let's wrap it up here. So we have variables. Remember that variables, they are they're named locations in memory. Memory for a variable, you're, you're affecting the user, taking it more than you need to. Um, it's always more appropriate to use primitive types than wrapper classes. Um, they're easier on memory, by the way. Your standard arithmetic operators, plus, minus, multiplier, so forth. Your Boolean types, your relational operators, less than, greater than, your double equal for equality. And then, of course, your floating type numbers, float, double, um, your char data type, your scanner, and your J option pane. All right, there's a lot in chapter two, but it's also fairly straightforward. Uh, questions about those assignments right now. No questions? Okay. For the remainder of the class, I'm right here. Those of you who need help, you need to uh, either get your JDK installed on your laptop or you're needing help with IntelliJ or you have questions about your assignment, please take this opportunity. Uh, we have about 10 minutes till the end of class. All right. Thank you, guys.